Reimers, and I'm an Associate Professor of Economics at Northeastern University. I want to thank the OECD for inviting me to speak about the economics of the book publishing industry. And just as a little disclaimer, I will focus somewhat on the US market, but I do think the patterns and the economic relationships that I show uh, should apply more broadly. So in true economics fashion as well, what I will do is I will, I will first look at the uh, demand estimation or the demand part of the uh, book publishing industry and then the supply. Um, and so to, to get the ball rolling, I'll, I'll start with the demand, right? So on the demand side, we know that the arrival of ebooks or the e-reader and the iPad have changed the market entirely. We now have different options to both obtain and consume books. And people really took advantage of these options pretty quickly. So here's just a quick graph of um, show, showing the share of top 150 weekly bestseller listings in the USA Today list um, that had uh, predominantly been sold as ebooks. And we can see that by 2013, we had about um, you know, almost 50%, 50 percent, 50 percent of all of the bestsellers were sold primarily as ebooks. Now, after 2013 or 12, uh, it's, it's, it happens that, that the economics com uh, consumption pretty much plateaued at around 200 million sales since then. They never got to caught, uh, catch up to, to physical books. This is the blue line, print books, um, despite having much lower prices. So these two markets kind of remained segmented in a way, right? Now, there's a couple of reasons why that might be the case. And the main reason really seems to be just that um, physical books and ebooks are two separate and distinct products, right? And some reasons for that, right, uh, that, that, that people might continue to stick with uh, print books is that there's some preference for holding something in your hand, right? When you read, you can actually have the feel of the paper. A second one could be that consumers are actually able to show off what they've read on their bookshelves when they have, you know, uh, guests or friends come over. And now, of course, there is going to be a big difference across genres. And I do want to focus on that, that, that I think when we think about book publishing, we should look at separate genres differently. Uh, for example, I think we might be embarrassed, some people might be embarrassed to show some uh, genre, some romance books on their bookshelves, whereas they might more proudly display their historical nonfiction books, right? Uh, in addition to that, of course, there's this need for a complementary device for, for people to even read an ebook and that increases the cost of reading and might dissuade some people from doing so. Um, now, there are some obvious challenges to the book publishing industry that come because of digitization. And it turns out that digitization itself may impact the consumption of ebooks differently than that of physical books. So I'm going to point out just two of them. You know, book piracy has been a big issue in, in all creative industries. Um, but you know what we have for evidence, and, and I'm referring to some papers of mine here with co-authors, by the way, um, is that you know that, that book piracy seems to hurt ebook sales. In fact, protection against piracy seems to increase sales by about 10%. So a pretty sizable effect. Whereas we see no effect. We there. I'm not aware of any paper that shows any effect that piracy hurts physical book sales. Um, in addition to that, we can look at mass digitization efforts or digital libraries, think maybe Google Books, um, which could also display sales, displace sales. Now, I'm again not aware of any published work estimating the effect of digital libraries on, on sales of current works, but, but a co-author and I have shown for public domain works, so works that are about 100 years old by now, they, they seem to increase like the, the google books in particular seems to increase the physical sales now this is based on an unpublished paper by me so with a little caveat but but we do seem the data speak a very clear language that you know we see like a large increase in sales for digitized books but not for uh, non-digitized books um, now one reason for that might be that this digitization can in fact allow consumers to learn about a book's quality or about a book's existence uh, sometimes before even buying the book. So think of this, you know, I, I think I think this is another very important channel that can really guide uh, consumption. In the past, if I was a consumer and I would like to learn which books I should read, well, I had outlets like the New York Times, which could tell me in the book review which books might be worth reading. Um, I find we find some some evidence again here that these book reviews have a huge impact on the sales for the reviewed books. But 
the number of reviewed books was relatively small. They could only review about a thousand books per year. Turns out the total number of books is so much larger. Now, today, or due to digitization, we do have other avenues to learn about books. Think Goodreads or Amazon star ratings. Um, and again, we can, because you know every book can be reviewed by somebody, we actually have this information for almost all the books in, in the market from other consumers. And um, I do have some work again with the co-author that uh, shows that the effects of these star ratings on sales and consumer well-being um, is about 10 times as large as the effect of professional reviews. Now, now the main reason of that is not because on a per book basis, um, star ratings have a bigger effect, but rather because um, professional uh, because professional reviews are only available for a very small group of books. Um, now on the supply side, digitization has all, also basically changed everything, right? The costs of distribution have just decreased a lot, both for eBooks, which is obvious because you know, distributing something via the internet is quite cheap, but also for physical books, thanks to e-commerce and more efficient uh, shipping, et cetera. Um, now the costs of writing have remained somewhat constant, although aspiring writers might have access to more online feedback, but importantly, consumers can now be reached without having to go through a traditional publisher who often served as a gatekeeper, right? And so as a consequence, there's been this huge increase in the number of new books entering the market from about half a million new books in 2008 to about two, two, over 2 million in 2012. Now, it turns out that self-publishing really plays an important role here. So what I'm showing here is just the number of new ISBNs from self-publishing platforms. Um, and what we find is exactly that the kind of the number um, of new self-published physical books has, has exploded up to about 1.5 million self-published physical books per year. Now, my guess is that these don't all are not all print on demand copies, but I wasn't quite clear on that. Um, for ebooks, the number of new registered self-published books has remained somewhat constant. Now, see that there's this difference here in, in um, you know, in, in the supply of self-published books could also explain why we don't see a big increase in the share of ebook consumption. Now, last thing, I, I did mention genres before, and I think it's really important to think about genres here. Um, note that there are big differences in you know between genres in their propensity for self-publishing now this here what i'm showing here is um the total number of new titles on a very popular self-published digital self-publishing platform smashwords um and we can see that the number of new romance titles per year is you know about twenty-five thousand. that's five times that of the number of new titles of the next most represented genre now, again, of course, we do need to find the right books, the needle in the haystack, which might be even harder if we have this many new books. But I showed you before that that might not actually be that big of an issue, right? Now, finally, to kind of finish on an optimistic note, right? Traditional publishers also need to find the right book to push and to, to invest in, right? Um, so it turns out that traditional publishers have have been able to embrace self-publishing in a way that they can they can learn about a book's appeal prior to investing in in the book themselves right so um, there's actually some evidence that the self-publishing and traditional publishers can complement each other on this dimension my right? traditional publishers can utilize the information from the sales of self-published books to pick and invest in those books that have the most potential for you know, or realized appeal among consumers. Um, this would basically make the market more efficient. So this, this graph kind of shows that, you know, and, and without going into detail, it, it kind of shows separately for, you know, the, the most uh, digitization affected genre, we see that the errors, think of, think of this y-axis as the errors of the um, prediction that, that publishers make about a book. And we can see that these errors in prediction decrease significantly for, um, for digitization affected genres after the introduction of, of the ebook. And so, so I, I kind of want to make this appeal that, um, that, that, that we have 
we can use the information that comes from self-publishing and from digitization to our advantage. And, and there is evidence that traditional institutions are already doing that and that consumers are already doing that as well. And so with that, I just kind of want to uh, thank you for your time. I do have you know, the references listed here, but um, I look forward to any more discussion on this, on this topic. Thank you.